Welcome to part two of the 2023 Volume 1 Catalog. Starting with Lion Chief Bliss 2.0, we've got the 282 Mikados, the USRA versions. And their valve gear is more detailed than an average Lion Chief Bliss 2.0 engine. I mean, it has these moving parts. The 060Ts. The first time Lionel released these, they were insanely successful, so it makes sense for Lionel to remake these things. The Bud RDC cars. When's the last time these things were done in Command and Control? I don't know, it feels like it's been forever. Well, you can finally get these commuter cars, this time with smoke units. You have the option to get these things as a single pack or a two pack. Oh, and guess what? In this catalog, Lionel is offering a Lion Chief Plus 2.0 Polar Express, but as an RVC. The ET-44 ACs. Too bad they're not available as Union Pacific or Canadian Pacific. Oh, take a look at the pilots and how they're connected to the upper deck. How did Lionel get that to run on 031? They look so realistic. And so, the GP20s are available as a Lion Chief Plus 2.0 versions too. Wow. Well, don't say this catalog doesn't have any GP20s. And finally, more engines that look like this. Welp, Disney is about to have its 100th anniversary, and Lionel plans to celebrate that. Lionel plans to release this Disney-themed starter set, which has some rainbow reflective-like silver on it. Let's not forget that Lionel plans to remake that Disney-themed hand car that helps Lionel get through the Great Depression. $200 for a hand car? I mean, seriously, how does a hand car get that expensive? Seriously, this thing was supposed to be cheap. It was meant to get Lionel through the Great Depression. Well, it's been almost a hundred years since Lionel made it, so Lionel probably doesn't have the tooling for it anymore. We even got some movie-themed trains. I mean, these movie-themed trains, I mean, it'll be okay if the movie has a train in it or is about a train, but what if the movie didn't have a train at all? I mean, that's a very weird idea. I mean, what about the frozen train set. That movie took place before trains were even invented! Come on! But this Willy Wonka train looks alright. I mean, factories could find good use for a train. Even a chocolate factory, like, needing to transport all the ingredients to make the chocolate or something. It's got animated cars with Oompa Loompas and a tank car filled with everlasting gobstoppers, a Wonka boxcar to reveal a golden ticket inside, a sawmill to turn chocolate logs into chocolate bars. Their ideas do seem pretty clever with the Willy Wonka stuff. At least they're not doing this version. Lionel could be doing Willy Wonka to honor Gene Wilder. But if Lionel's trying to honor Gene Wilder, why won't they make a Silver Streak set? Yeah! They could make the Locomotive's Legacy or Lion Chief Plus 2.0 and make the announcements from the movie. Lionel is also making the E2 tank engine. You know, those very unsuccessful tank engines in Europe. This time, for some reason, these E2s are colored in blue and have a face on it. Lionel is also making a model of the British Class 08. 
Wait a minute. What's the proper reaction to these things? Hmm. Oh, yes. Ah, ah, oh my god! Ah, oh my god! Now, we've made it to the Halloween stuff. Hopefully, Lionel can release it by October, but, um... They really are not the scariest types of Halloween decorations. At least they're using I, my idea for a gate man with a scary guy who just pops out. Okay, he's not that scary. I mean, it's Frankenstein. Who here has not heard of Frankenstein? Lionel still thinks that Boneyard Soda is scary. I mean, look at these billboards. Circus Terror? Scream Engine, really? If you'd lived here, you'd be home now? What the heck? But I do see some better ideas, like this tank car filled with blood, and some horror-themed animated boxcars. Pennywise with a balloon that bobs up and down, and then there's the exorcist girl floating. Those things look awesome. I really hope Lionel can release those by October. Then they've got a NASA train set, and I know this sounds crazy, but NASA really does have a railroad. A short railroad, but Lionel should have picked a different locomotive. They should have picked this locomotive. I mean, yes, Lionel does have the tooling for it. I know they do. Ooh, the merchandise cars. I need to get one of those. MTH has sold the tooling for their 280s to Lionel. And I actually like these better as an MTH engine because I like Proto Sound 3.0 a lot better than Lion Chief. A lot. Then we've got the DC stuff such as this LexCorp hopper filled with kryptonite that really lights up, and Wonder Woman's invisible jet on a flat car that's kind of funny. Then we've got the Lion Chief Polar Express sets. I have just gotten the Lion Chief Polar Express Berkshire, and let me tell you about it. For this version, Lionel has got to make the sounds louder. I sure hope they make the sounds louder, because the one I've got had that sounds way too quiet. I mean, seriously, the point of sounds is to be able to hear them. Lionel probably did that because they think children's ears are too sensitive. But seriously, how sensitive does Lionel think their our ears really are? For those of you who haven't set up a layout yet, Lionel has decided to release a Polar Express ice set with the light up track and an ice mat, and then you can run your Polar Express uh, on it. Then we've got more Christmas stuff. I actually like the Sleigh Bell Limited E8. They just have a unique look to me. I hope Lionel can release that before December. Look at the guy with the tree and the axe. Look at it. This box car doesn't look all Christmassy. It looks like a guy killed someone. It looks scarier than all their Halloween stuff. And it's the 100th anniversary of Warner Brothers, too. You know, I kind of know Warner Brothers for owning the rights to the DC Comics. Lionel should have made some billboards with DC superheroes on them or something. Lionel had also made a flagpole for those with childish humor and still think underwear is funny. And we've got the Billups Crossing Brigade. This one interests me. I know it was in last catalog, but I didn't get a chance to talk about this. 
For the real one, there was only one ever built in the state of Mississippi for the Illinois Central Railroad. The crossing gate malfunctioned many times, and people were very confused of it. That doesn't look like a railroad crossing signal. That looks like the entrance of a parking lot to a, the, a Halloween-themed place. Or maybe pirate-themed place. One of the two. Made sirens instead of bell sounds. It caused confusion for many drivers crossing the tracks. During World War II, they would mistaken the siren for somebody dropping bombs. It also had a high percentage of deaths. Later on, they installed normal crossing gates, and then later on, they took the thing down. This one that Lionel's making, there's a couple problems, like the fact that it's permanently stuck to a piece of fast track. I mean, seriously, not everybody is going to use Fast Track. Lionel should have made a version that's not permanently connected to Fast Track, like this crossing signal right here. And one final thing that I should talk about is the Cab 3 base. I know I I've talked about it a little bit in the last catalog video, but not enough. This thing actually, I really don't like the idea at all, in my opinion. For starters, you have to control it with your phone. I mean, the last time Lionel made an app control app for your phone, it didn't have very good speed controller. So I hope they get the speed control right this time. I mean, too fast is right next to too slow. And this means I also won't be able to record my trains because I record them with my phone, and in case if any of you want to know about this shot, I had two phones. The one in my hand was completely broken. And there's the fact that they are discontinuing the Legacy Remote, one of the greatest control systems Lionel made. No, don't do it, Lionel. The Legacy Remote is so awesome. Please, don't. Even worse, they are discontinuing it way too early. Like a year before this thing comes out. And now it is very rare and expensive. So if you plan to start controlling trains with Legacy, you're screwed. If your Legacy remote breaks and you need a replacement, you're screwed. Legacy remote didn't cause the TMCC remote to discontinue. There's the lack of features. Oh, it's got features, all right. Just not a lot of new features. I mean, seriously, they only released this thing for four-digit addressing. That's not even a play feature. They are barely even making a f any trains that use this feature. Just the most high-end train of the catalog, and that's it. But I could be wrong. Lionel could be making other trains with this feature. It's time to play Find the Other Legacy Engine with the Four Digit Addressing. Eddie here, no! Eddie here, no! Eddie here, no! Congratulations, Lionel! You have just created the worst control system in your entire company's history! So that's it for the catalog. I'm gonna get the Vision Line Big Boy, the Dreyfus Hudson, maybe some of the Decapods, and the only way I'll ever get a camel back is that if the one I have right now ever breaks. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Goodbye.